Hi fellow key shooter. Today I want to show how to create a bead blasted aluminum as the material you see on a MacBook Pro or on a Bose SoundLink Mini or on a lot of other products that are out these days. It's, uh, it's a tough one and it's not going to be perfect but it might help you on the way to create your own perfect bead blasted aluminum material. Here in Keyshot I have um, a MacBook Pro plug out um, with this recess that we're going to use as a to create the material and on top of that I have this yellow sphere used to uh, check our roughness settings and reflectivity settings of this bead blasted aluminum material and the scene is lit by this Stosh Studio 2 HDRI uh, which is pretty cool because it has like there's a lot of contrast and a bit of color in it so the result that we are getting is uh, as close to uh, reality as possible so the reason why i think this material is tough for a lot of people to to nail is that because from a distance it looks like a completely smooth surface with some roughness to it um but actually where you get in real close um, as you see on this reference image that I took, you see that there's a lot of stuff going on in the, especially in the bump mapping. So it looks like there's a small, a lot of small fine bumps, and then there are some bigger bumps scattered around the surface. And uh, I'll try to recreate that right now. So as usual, I start by opening up the material graph for this material. And actually, I want to rearrange it like this. This time, so we have the, uh, the rendering close to the reference image. And that way, we can constantly check against the, uh, this image if we are getting closer or not. All right. First step is to change this uh, material type to metal. And um, as a first thing, I'm going to change the color to a light gray with a bit of uh, a bit of yellow hint to it. Very subtle, but it it might just help to give a a more realistic look that is not completely white or um completely grayscale and as a beginning let's just bump up this roughness slider to a point where it looks like something that we would expect it would actually have been good to have a reference image of something colorful sitting on top of this material to really check how the reflections uh works here in the material this is good enough for now. And let's go ahead and create the bumps that we are going to need. And I know from the beginning that I, I'm going to need more than one bump map. So I'm going to add in this utility node, bump add, add into the bump node, and start creating the first bump map, which I am going to use the uh, noise texture for. Take that and uh, drag it into bump number one and hit C on the keyboard to show the color information. And it's pretty obvious that we need to scale it down quite a lot. We need to have like represent all these small bumps. So a scale around point zero 0.01 looks pretty close. Um, actually, I'm going to show you something at, at point one at first, because right now, if I just activate the region render, command shift R to a rest of a area faster. The, uh, you can see that the bump is quite wavy and soft. And even if we bump up the uh, bump height, it's, uh, yeah, it's very wavy and soft looking. To make that a bit sharper looking, like here on the reference image, I'm going to uh, increase this magnitude slider. And you'll see that the bumps get more 
pronounced or it gets a bit more sharper. Um, so let's do like this and take it back down to 0 0.01. And as you see, it's uh, pretty close to what we see down here. Maybe even make it a bit smaller and take the bump height down a few steps. Let it rest for a few seconds. And uh, yeah, I think this is good for now. What we have now is pretty even compared to what we have here. There's a lot of subtle imperfections going on to this bump map. Uh, that makes it a bit more yeah, realistic to look at because this is a realistic picture. It's a real life picture, obviously. So to add that to our material, I'm going to use this uh, noise fractal texture. Uh, add it in and add it to the bump number two. And again, hit C on the keyboard to view the color information. And again, the scale needs to go down quite a lot. Um, to make it easier to see how it affects the material, I'm going here in the beginning to disable this first bump map. So we only have this new one. Uh, I know I want the bump height to be bigger and maybe even some more levels if it makes any difference not too sure leave it at seven and then i'm going to adjust the fall off to again um, make the spots that this map creates uh, a bit sharper so here at fall off 1.2 It's uh, soft looking and there's a lot of stuff going on. But if we increase that to, for example, three, you see that a lot of it gets cut away. And um, these height points are way, yeah, they are more pronounced and, and, and they are further between them. Decrease the scale a bit and maybe take the fall off a bit down, 2.2 and uh, enable this original or the first nice texture that we did again. And I think this is starting to look pretty cool and close to what we have here on the reference image. To give this uh, material a bit more detail, I want to um, add a map for the roughness as well. I'm not quite sure that it that is going on here in the in the reference picture, but I think it will give something to the material here in Keyshot. And for that, I'm going to use this noise texture that we created before and right click and duplicate it, drag it up here and drag it down to the plus sign on the material and say roughness. Double click on the node and adjust the colors. Um, black is completely shiny and white is completely rough. So. Let's just try something in the middle and something a bit darker. And here it's uh, it's really good to have our yellow ball sitting so we can see how the the, the final roughness is going to look. And um, I think this is a bit too shiny, so I have to uh, make this one brighter. And I'm just going by eye on this. As I said before, it would have been nice to have a, a colored thing sitting on this reference picture. But we'll have to do for now. And I think this is looking close to what we are after. If we view everything and let it sit for a few minutes. All right, so this is what we got. Although that it's uh, looking pretty close to the reference image, uh, you might need to, uh, or you might want to do some further adjustments to it, bring the bump maps down a bit, or play with the the interplay between them uh, and see how they affect each other by adjusting different things, and also fine tuning this roughness map, or even just go back to to the roughness slider and find a perfect value for your material.
So if we zoom out and show the uh, entire thing and let it rest for a few minutes or a few seconds, you'll see that it starts to appear smooth as it does in reality. The bump maps are so small that you can't see them. But they are there and they affect the lighting in some way. So it's nice to do the material in close up and then uh, take it back afterwards. Of course, if you only need this one view from afar, then it does maybe doesn't make too much sense to uh, to spend a, a lot of time on doing like macro details. But it's uh, I mean I think it's good to have in case you need a close up shot. And I think that the result is going to be more realistic in the end, anyways. That's it for this one. Let me know if you uh, create some great looking bead blasted aluminum materials yourself. I would really love to see them. Thanks for watching. Take care.